Just before I turned double digits, my mom, my sister, and me all took our family vacation to Niagara Falls. And one of the highlights of our trip was the Cave of the Winds tour. Before we went on this tour, we all had to go into a locker room and put on a bright yellow raincoat and rain boots. That was a subtle hint. You're about to get soaked. So we suited up in our yellow raincoats and galoshes. We really looked like bananas. The tour took us behind Niagara Falls through a series of stairs and lookout decks. We started off on the bottom deck and worked our way up the stairs to the top and closest deck to the falls, aptly named Hurricane Deck. From Hurricane Deck, we were only 20 feet from touching the majesty of Niagara Falls. But on Hurricane Deck, the mist was blinding. The sound was deafening. We couldn't take any photos or talk to anybody on Hurricane Deck. I couldn't even lift my head to look around. There really wasn't anything to do except to get soaked and more soaked. We were drenched. and My family decided they'd had enough of the falls. It was time to go. They started down the decks and... There I was, nine years old, standing on hurricane deck in the midst of mist, amidst a sea of six feet tall walking bananas. And I started to call out for my family. Mom? Dad? LaShawn? And all I heard back was, whoosh. Sound effects are free on Simplify. I tried looking for my family, but all I saw was yellow, Yellow, more yellow. I couldn't distinguish any of the faces from the thinning crowd. More and more people were done with this deck, and they started to descend the decks. And after about 20 minutes, without a tap on the shoulder, without any indiscernible, LJ, let's go, I realized I was left behind. All alone, at nine years old, in New York, on hurricane deck, left to fend for myself against man and nature. So long, family. Tell them all I loved them. Hey, I'll share the rest of that story with you right after this. Good day to you, Simplify listeners. Happy Pentecost Sunday. I hope it's a great day. You're listening to L.J. Harry, and you're listening to The Lost Coin on Simplify. Mom, Dad, LaShawn, they finally made it to the bottom of the decks and back into the locker room. That's where and when they took inventory. Okay, let's see here. We've got Mom, yes. And Dad, yes. And LaShawn, yes. Mom and Dad had this nagging feeling they were leaving something or someone behind, and all of a sudden my mom said, Kevin! No, <laughs> she looked around and she thought, LJ? 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 No, LJ. I was hanging out with Kevin McAllister in Chicago. They realized they left their nine-year-old up there somewhere, but where and how? Staff at Niagara Falls can't just turn off the falls and ask around for me. Excuse me, have you seen this young man? He's wearing yellow. There's no amber alert on hurricane deck. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of time to find me. And they were already out of the raincoats, they could have said, well, you know, we still got LaShawn and a really good adoption agency just down the road. Let's go ahead and head home. My sister might have even encouraged them toward that end. Hey, let's trade him in for a sister. But thankfully, my family realized what this story tells. There is no substitute for someone lost. The only right response is we do all we can to find them and bring them back. So my family slipped back on their yellow raincoats and rain boots and walked back up that series of decks and lookouts until they finally found me drenched, terrified, teeth chattering on hurricane deck. And they brought me back from the throes of danger and despair. Well, on another day, Jesus looked around at the softer faces in the crowd and he told a story. Suppose one of you ladies had ten silver coins. And the ladies who were married, or the ladies about to be married, they knew what those ten silver coins meant. That wasn't ice cream money. That was their dowry. Some of the brides or brides-to-be strung ten silver coins on a cord, and they would wear it as a headdress. It was the closest covenant their culture had to a wedding band. And Jesus said, suppose you had ten silver coins, and one morning when you woke up, you noticed the coin 
cord was unraveled and went to put the headdress on like yesterday, but it was lighter than it was yesterday. So you counted the coins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm, it's not right. So you count again. This time in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve. Where's the ace? You looked on the nightstand where the rest of them were, but it's not there. And around the nightstand where it might be, but it's not there either. And you realize you've lost one of those ten silver coins. One of the coins that made up your dowry. One of the coins that a groom had given for the right to be able to marry you. And it's gone. What do you do? Do you shrug your shoulders and say, well, that's a shame. At least I still have nine. Nine out of ten ain't bad. That's still 90%. That's preposterous. No bride or bride-to-be would feel that way. Jesus knew. So here's what you do. You reach for the oil lamp, trim the wick, and set it on the nightstand. Then you reach for the palm branch broom and frantically yet carefully sweep the floor. From morning till noon if you must, from dawn till dusk if you must. You're not sweeping to lose dust, you're sweeping to find a coin. You silence everything and everyone in the house because one brush of the broom just might uncover the coin and you might be able to hear the jangle of that coin against the hard dirt floor. Then you bring the oil lamp close to the floor hoping the flame will shine in the face of the silver and when it does, you pick up the coin, add it to the other nine and you will go door to door, knocking on closed doors, calling through open doors to your neighbors, even the nosy neighbors. Rejoice with me. I, I lost one of my coins, but, but now it's found. I've got all ten again. As the ladies thought of the crisis of losing a part of their dowry, of losing one of those coins, they were relieved to find it had been found. And Jesus closed his short story by taking us from our humble home to our heavenly home when he said, So it is. There will be more joy in the presence of the angels of God in heaven over one sinner that repents. In this very chapter, Jesus told a story about a lost sheep and a lost son. In each of those stories, Jesus shone the lamp of his word on a very well-known truth. It's possible for a sheep to wander off and be lost in the wilderness, and it's possible for a son to walk off and be lost in that big, cold world. And we heard about both of those in a podcast episode called Sheep and Sons. But in this story, Jesus shone the same truthful light on a lesser-known truth. It's even possible to be lost and still be in the house. In the first story, the sheep followed something just past the fence and was lost. In the second story, the son followed something just past the garden gate, and he was lost. But in this story, the coin didn't do anything wrong. It was on the cord where it had always been, but because of neglect or maybe even because of abuse, it was lost. Maybe the giddy bride-to-be didn't tie the headdress tight enough and now the coin was lost. Or maybe even in a moment when she was thinking about the wedding, she twirled the string of coins around and the coin fell off and it was lost. It wasn't the coin's fault, but the truth remained. The coin was still lost. Lost coins are just as lost as lost sheep and sons. They're just not lost somewhere out there. They're lost somewhere in here. Some people are lost even though they still seem to be safe because they're still in the house. Some people are lost and they didn't really do anything wrong to be lost. Maybe a brother or sister neglected you when you needed them and you're hurt and you're lost. Or worse yet, maybe somebody abused you and abused your trust and now you're lost. But you're still in the house so you don't feel like you're lost except you're no longer connected to God or your church family like you used to be. You feel like you're fine because you're still in the house, but if you're not right with God and where God wants you to be, you're lost in the house, just as lost in the woods. My pastor has a profound statement for lost coins who didn't do anything to be lost. He says, it's not your fault, but it is your problem. You may not have asked for it, but you do have to deal with it. Jesus used the same word in both stories for lost. It literally means to be destroyed or to perish. Jesus was giving the gravity of being lost. It's more than just unfortunate. It's tragic. If you're in the house but not right with God, your soul is in danger. 
Some of you can't reach out to God because you're buried beneath bitterness or unforgiveness or hatred. Buried beneath the sting of words spoken or the silence of words not spoken. Some of you may feel so overwhelmed by life that you feel like there's no hope and the only way out is by your own hand. Please, please hear me. There is hope and the way out is the way back. You can be in the house all your life and still be lost for all eternity. So I am pleading with those of you who are lost in the house, you still have time to offer forgiveness or ask for forgiveness or ask for help or healing. Get help and get right with God again. No matter how you feel, there is no substitute for you in the kingdom of God. If so, our bride-to-be would have skipped down to the market, paid the going rate for a silver coin, added it to the cord, and she would have had ten again. But there is no replacement for the one coin that's lost. Each coin was a gift from her bridegroom. Each coin mattered. So do you. If you're lost, even if you're in the house, someone else might be teaching your class or singing your part on the praise team or driving your van route or sitting in your chair closer to the altar. But make no mistake, no one else can take your place because there is no substitute for your soul in the kingdom of God. If you're lost, even if you're still in the house, just stay in the house and reach out to God for his help. Reach out to God in repentance. And allow God and his church to sweep and search until we find you. And he and we restore you to health and healing and wholeness again. You will hear heaven rejoice above you. And your whole church family rejoice beside you. I want to pray. Please pray with me right now. Maybe you are the one lost. I want to pray God will reach for you and your church family will reach for you and sweep and search until they find you. Or maybe you know someone who is lost, even in the house. I want to pray that God would use you to minister to them and sweep and search for them until you find them and help bring them back to healing and wholeness and right relationship with God again. Lord Jesus, I come to you today with a a heavy heart. For those who are lost, even in the house, I come to you, God, pleading, praying. You would reach for them, minister to them, God. For those who have turned cold toward you and turned against you or turned their back on you, even if they're still in the house, God, I pray you'd reach for them, minister to them, Lord, soften their heart again under repentance. For those who feel overwhelmed, who feel like there is no hope, I pray, God, you'd minister to them, Jesus, give them hope. Let them know you love them. Let them know your church family loves them, I pray. And help your church family to love them, to sweep for them, search for them. I'm asking you today, Jesus, to minister to all of those who are lost, even in the house. God, help them, bring them back to right relationship with you again, Lord. I'm asking you for your help, your healing, your wholeness. I pray it. I thank you for it, for your grace and your mercy. Restore those who are lost, no matter where they are. Restore them to you again. I pray this and thank you in the precious, lovely wonderful, merciful name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you know somebody who needs this episode, please share it with them. Be sure to click subscribe. Be sure to click share. You won't have to miss an episode of Simplify, and no one you love and care about will have to miss an episode either. So be sure to click subscribe. Be sure to click share. Speaking of episodes of Simplify, we are as close to 100,000 downloads as I was to Hurricane Deck. So I am so excited and thankful you made Simplify part of your devotional walk. Continue listening and cross that 100,000 download threshold with me and we will rejoice together. Be sure to click to head over to PentecostalPublishing.com. Got some great resources. A couple of books I've written. One's called Simplify, which is the devotional that launched this podcast. The other is 10 Words, a practical look at the Ten Commandments. You can get both of those on PentecostalPublishing.com. They're both available for Kindle on Amazon. And then also you can pick them up if you live in this Mount Vernon, Ohio, Knox County area. You can pick them up at our charming bookstore, Paragraphs, at the corner of South Main and East Ohio. Next week, I'm going to share another story with you Jesus shared with us, and this one is called The Older Brother, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you next week, and always look forward to walking closer with Jesus as we walk through Simplify.